Let us now go over an introduction to SAP security as related to IT audits. Here are the topics that we will cover in this lesson. We will go over SAP security basics, the SAP authorization concept, and powerful access in SAP. Let's start with the SAP security basics. This course is focused on IT audit for SAP, so the security concepts we will cover are those that are related to IT audits. This course is not intended to cover all aspects of SAP security. Here are the topics that we will cover in this lesson. We will go over password and security parameters, user types, and user authorization and roles. One of the key controls that's tested for IT audits is the user authentication controls, and this is related to the password and security parameters in SAP. This control addresses how passwords and security parameters for user authentication are configured according to the relevant IT policies of the organization. On the screen, you have a list of common password and security parameters that are reviewed during an IT audit. Let's go over each one. The first parameter that ends in minimum password digits specifies the minimum number of digits that are required for a password. The second one that has minimum password letters specifies the minimum number of letters for a password. The next one that ends in minimum password LNG specifies the minimum password length for a password that can be created by a user. The next one, minimum password lowercase, specifies the minimum number of lowercase characters that a user can include in their password. The next one, minimum password specials, specifies the minimum number of special characters that are allowed in the password. The next one, minimum password uppercase, specifies the minimum number of uppercase characters or letters that can be used in the password. The next parameter, password history size, specifies the number of passwords saved in the history, and users cannot use any password within the defined history range when setting up a new password. The next parameter, password expiration time, specifies the number of days after which a password must be changed. The next item, fails to user lock, specifies the number of times a user can enter an incorrect password before the system locks that user account. And the next one on the list, fails to session end, specifies the number of times a user can enter an incorrect password before the system ends their session. There are many more parameters, as you will see during the demo, but only the key ones that are required by the IT audit controls need to be tested. And on the screen here, you have a screenshot of what password parameters look like in SAP. We will go over this information in more detail during the demo lesson. I just wanted to show you here what it looks like and so that you can see how the information is set up. Another feature in SAP is that it allows some illegal passwords to be set. This means that users cannot use any of the passwords in the illegal list as their own password. When performing an IT audit, you can request the list of illegal passwords if that is part of the control requirement. It is okay if clients don't use this table as long as the IT policies don't specify that this table needs to be used. You can also ask during your interview if your client or organization use this table. Let's now review the types of users in SAP. There are five main types of users and I will go over each one. The first one is the dialogue user type. These are end user accounts and they allow for end users to log into the SAP GUI. So accounts that regular users in the system use are referred to as dialogue user accounts. The next one is the communication user type. These are the user accounts that directly communicate between systems or interfaces, and these do not allow direct login by an individual or a person. The next one is the services user type. These are the service accounts that other systems use to access SAP. These accounts are usually privileged accounts that can log directly into SAP, so knowledge of their password should be restricted. SAP system administrators can set up these accounts and they have access to change the passwords. 
Some examples of service accounts are accounts that third-party systems, like Oracle, may need to communicate with SAP as data is being moved across systems. The next one is the system user type. These are the accounts that can be used for remote function calls, or CPIC, which is Common Programming Interface for Communication, or Background System Processing. These users do not allow direct logging to SAP. And the last one is the reference user type. This is a user type that is used for managing or maintaining roles. Roles can be assigned to the reference user account, and then the reference user account can be assigned to dialog users. These are user accounts that also do not allow direct logging to SAP. From an IT audit perspective, the user types that are typically tested are the dialog and services user types because they allow direct logging into the system.